Greetings Mary Maid folks, Simeon here. I want to do this video on something that we as witches classify as hidden in plain sight. Now, I hate to coin the term uh, uh, that uh, a very famous author sort of uh, uh, quoted, but muggles. We uh, uh, have sort of got to try and keep our existence hidden in plain sight so that it's not obvious to the naked eye. Other paganists know and can tell who other paganists are just by sheer nature of the way that uh, uh, we operate and we exist in our belief systems and that type of thing. Uh, for them we stand out like a uh, an apple in an orchard of oranges. Anyway, hidden in plain sight. There are certain things that we do as witches to hide ourselves away so that we're not discovered. Uh, one of the many things that we do is hide our craft in household objects or in curios that we happen to stumble on and flea markets or we happen to, to buy on uh, Amazon.ca or Amazon.com. But uh, uh, these trinkets we keep on our shelves have a secondary purpose. Uh, uh, just as a side vent, one of the things that you will find about paganists and uh, witches in general, we repurpose everything. And I do mean everything. We leave no stone unturned, so to speak. Now, uh, a find that I found at a flea market, and the seller didn't know what they had, but I bought it for 50 cents. On the open market, it is probably worth probably close to between 200 and 300 bucks. It is a ebony, a, a dark ebony container. hand sculptured, Inuit by design, Eskimo by design, but the outside perimeter all the way around is sculptured and the lid is sculptured. Now I'll bring it a little bit closer so you can see it here. Can you see the sculpturing on that lid? Okay, that's the lid. Now let's see if we can hold the, the side up a little bit. This piece is, as far as I can tell, African blackwood. And no, it's not made in China. It is a handcrafted Inuit piece that happened to find its way onto the local flea markets. Nobody knew exactly what it was, and uh, the seller priced it accordingly, just trying to get rid of it sold it to me for 50 cents. I would say that this particular container, polished inside, recessed cap, fits without too much wiggle room. It's probably worth maybe just under 60 bucks. And I got it for 50 cents. Okay. Hidden in plain sight. We store a lot of our magical items in other things that to the undiscerned eye appear normal, like uh, a herb container on a shelf or a sugar tin on a shelf or a uh, particular curio that when people come and visit, they look at it and say, oh, that's nice. Where did you get that? And normally I would say at a flea market. I wouldn't elaborate too much on it. But we contain our magical items and things like this. Now, we spare no expense. Witches are not the most financially abundant of creatures on the planet. So we make use of whatever we can to store our objects 
in plain sight. Good example is for some of my uh, lotions and potions and oils, uh, my goddess oil, because my, my goddess is a dark goddess, I choose a skull theme. Now, check that out. That is a crystal head skull, uh, Dan Aykroyd vodka bottle. Now I will hide limitless potions in there, and because it has enough of a lip on the top, I can slide it into a slot and it'll stay there. I can label it on the bottom. But I don't want to deface the, the front, the skull, actual head. But uh, we can put things like essential oils and things like this. We can put moon waters and solar waters and things like this. Uh, what else can we put in? Herbal alcohol-based tinctures. We can put in this. Anything that we can make that is liquid or semi-powdered form, we can hide in things. Now, another one of the things that you wouldn't expect to find magical supplies in is that. A contact eye drop solution container. We can hide uh, dragon's blood oil, uh, various different forms of combination oils or singular blend oils in this, and because of the applicator, we can give it a drop at a time type application, which is perfect. I've got a small one here. As you can see, has a little bit of a big shoulder to it, okay, which means it can be slidden into a slot and let hang. And because I, because I've taken the labels off, you can put any label on that you want. Now another thing is. Yes. Ten points. If you can figure out what that actually is. I'll hold it close so you can take a look at it. Let me take the lid off for you. There used to be a ball on the top of that. And it would be a roll-on. But I took the ball out. And I'm just using it as a container. But you can hide incense in there, herbs in there, pretty much anything you can think of. Alright. That is a, a lip roll-on. For fragrance, for gloss, that type of thing. All right, what else have I got here? Ah, okay. This. This one here is a little dented. But what it is is a credit card holder. Or a business card holder. I've taken the slots that were out that you would normally put a business card in and just left the capacity the cavity in here for anything you want. Now if you're going to hold herbs in here, I would strongly recommend that you uh, add the herbs to a small little tiny micro Ziploc bag, fold it up and place it in here. Now something that I haven't been able to find yet, but I do have it on uh, hand here is uh, the ultimate in repurposing. 
Now, uh, you can look it up, you can Google it, but it is called a beep lighter. B E E P lighter. It's butane, it's refillable, but they have a tendency of failing. So, what I normally do is once they finally fail for the last time, there's a little set screw in the bottom. I undo the set screw, take out the innards. There's a little top form that has a flip lid. I glue that flip lid back in place with no no uh, gas chamber, so it's like a it's like a little cavity. Okay, I seal the bottom holes, and uh, if I really want to, I'll take a little bit of soap and acetone and wipe away the silk screen name beep on the thing and uh, with white uh, uh, nail polish or white out and lacquer I'll title it what actually I want to put inside of it but the top flips open and uh, whatever you put in there I would recommend also a little tiny micro a jeweler's uh, uh, ziploc bag with crystals or herbs or that type of thing in it seal it up slide it in there close the lid to muggles it looks like a lighter to us because uh, we're a little bit more curious than muggles we will open it up and we see the craft hidden in plain sight all right now I'm a big one for containers and uh, I'm fascinated, absolutely fascinated, with the Chinese puzzle boxes. If I could ever get my hands on one, I would be in bliss for the rest of my life. But uh, I love the idea of boxes hidden within boxes, hidden within boxes. Uh, you, you've seen the nesting dolls uh, uh, that are advertised on eBay and that type of thing. Or there's maybe what, uh, uh, like four or five different nesting dolls, one within the other. Uh, I'm fascinated with nesting dolls, but the Chinese puzzle boxes have me on an edge. Because you actually have to use a method to unlock them, reveal the next step, unlock that step, and so on and so forth. For me, those carry the most powerful magic that you can actually think of because you have to go through different layers and steps to get your gold to get what's in the very center box of the Japanese uh, or Chinese uh, Asian uh, uh, puzzle boxes okay it's simple but here's mine a box within a, a box within a box 